Hey everyone, I'm Mike from theparkprodigy.com and on today's video we're going to break down 13 of the best tips and tricks for visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando. And of course the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is such an important part of any Universal Orlando trip, that's why we wanted to make sure to create this video just to have everyone be as prepared as possible for their next theme park vacation. I'm really excited for this video, so let's go get started. Thank you all again so, so much for checking out this video. Like I said, we're about to break down the 13 best tips and tricks for visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You might have seen some of these tips and tricks in some of our other videos if you've been watching, but we decided just to kind of bring them all um, into one main hub for specifically our boy Harry Potter and the Wizarding World, which is an amazing, immersive experience that we really think anyone will enjoy, not just Harry Potter fans. So we're going to start the list at number 13, and we're going to start with visiting Ollivander specifically for the Ollivander's Wand experience. And the Ollivander's Wand Experience is a popular shop within the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Universe Orlando. Now, the cool thing about it is that it's located in both Diagon Alley and also in Hogsmeade, so it doesn't matter which side of the park you're visiting, you'll have an opportunity to go check out this cool little shop. And of course, this is the iconic wand shop from the Harry Potter series, where Harry and his friends go to purchase their wands. Now, the cool thing, and one of the things that we're stating here, is that you can go and check out the Ollivander's Wand Experience, which is a live show that takes place inside the wand shop where visitors can watch a wand, choose a wizard or a witch. Now the show is hosted by a character actor who plays the role of Mr. Ollivander, the owner of the shop, and during the show, Mr. Ollivander will select a member of the audience to be the chosen one and helps find them the perfect wand. Now what we will say too is as you're visiting with your family, typically they're looking for um, you know, witches and wizards around the age of seven up to 10, right? Because that's pretty much right where Harry was within the books and the movies. You know, for everyone else, you could definitely still go enjoy this experience and, and really just watch along and take and be a part of the fun. And of course, this will really give you that ultimate Harry Potter experience because this is exactly what was going on in the books and the movies. And what we will say is it is a popular um, shop. So be sure to arrive early to secure a spot or just, you know, kind of get there before the crowds get there. And another great tip and trip is the Diagon Alley Ollivanders has two showrooms, which make the line go a little bit faster. And of course, you can't leave this without talking about early park admission. Ollivanders is open during early park admission, which we might talk about in a little bit. So what we have experienced is there are shorter wait times during that early park time. Okay, moving on to number 12, and we would say watch out for the magical details. Now we have a whole video explaining some of the secrets of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which we are getting ready to release. But some of our favorites are that in the restrooms and Hogsmeade, you can hear Murning Myrtle. Also, the Owl Post, you can actually mail a letter and it will be stamped from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So that's something cool that you might do. You know, let's say as the kids are waiting online for some of the rides, maybe you're not into rides, you can go and mail a letter home. So by the time you get home, the kids have a letter from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And then, of course, there are others, you know, really, really cool details, specifically inside of Hogwarts Castle, and then also over at Diagon Alley. Keep an eye out for Creature. Keep an, keep an eye out for a Platform 9 and 3 quarters as you're going through the Hogwarts Express. And then we might talk about another one of the little great details in a little bit, but those are just some of the most popular ones. And again, just take what I just said, go Google, and you'll know exactly where to find all of them. Okay, on to number 11. And as you're you know kind of enjoying your time in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, we would say that if you're looking for the best shops, plan to go over to um, Diagon Alley. Now, also with that being said, Universal does have some really, really great merchandise specifically for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So you definitely will want to, you know, you're probably gonna wanna buy a couple of items to take back home with you. And what we would say is you can shop and ship to your resort or to City Walk, depending on where you're staying. Now, you probably heard us talking about this, but if you're staying at a Universal Orlando hotel, you can get your merchandise shipped back to your Universal Orlando hotel so you don't have to worry about carrying that merchandise around all day. If you're not, let's say you're staying over at Disney or any of the other hotels in the Orlando area, you can get your merchandise shipped to the main Universal Orlando store in City Walks. So you can kind of just go and grab it and kind of you know, pick it up on your way out at the end of the night. Okay, moving on to number 10. Don't forget to take Wizarding Photos. Now, the My Universal Photos is a service offer that you can purchase and download professional photos taken throughout the parks. 
Now, that's no different within the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, as these photos are taken by Universal Orlando photographers at various locations throughout the resort, of course, including the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. To access your photos, you'll need to purchase a photo package or add the service to your ticket or annual pass. But once you have that service, you'll receive a My Disney photo card that you can use to link your photos to your account. And some of our favorite places to take advantage of the really, really cool and professional photos are Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, Hagrid's and Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey all have ride photos within them. The other cool thing that we've done in the past is on Escape from Gringotts, they actually have a, a photo before you even get on this ride. It's kind of like um, Sirius Black with the, the moving um, newspapers. It's really, really cool and something that I do think every Harry Potter fan will really enjoy. Okay, moving on to number nine, and we would say don't miss the shows. That's right. I feel like the rides specific, specifically over at Hogsmeade get all of the glory, right? But Universal does have some really, really great shows specifically themed around the Wizarding World of Harry Potter to just give you that extra touch and extra, you know, feel that like you are in the books and the movies. And some of our favorite uh, shows, just to make sure that you do check out, are the Tri-Wizard Spirit Rally. Now, this show takes place in the Hogsmeade area of the park and features the Hogwarts mascots, which are the Gryffindor Lion, the Slytherin Snake, the Hufflepuff Badger, and the Ravenclaw Eagle as they compete in a series of challenges. It's a fun and energetic show that's the perfect fit for any Harry Potter fan of all ages. Over to the Frog Choir. Now, I can't forget about the Frog Choir. It is a group of Hogwarts students who sing and play instruments. They perform a variety of songs in the Hogsmeade area of the park, and their performances are accompanied by a chorus of animatronic frogs. It's a fun and entertaining show that cannot be missed. And we can't forget about the dark arts at Hogwarts Castle. This is the nighttime show that takes place in Hogsmeade, and it features projections, special effects, and music as it tells the story of the dark arts and the heroes who defeated them. Now, this is really probably my favorite show out of all of them. The only thing that I will say that's kind of an um, a inconvenience about this show is that they don't always release the show times. You know, it's not every single night especially during the slower times of the year, and the Universal does not release when it will be, so it's kind of a crapshoot, unfortunately. And then last but not least, we have the Tales of Beetle the Bard, and this show takes place in Diagon Alley, and it features a live actor performing the stories of Beetle the Bard, a famous wizarding storyteller. It's a great way to learn about the wizarding world and just have a good laugh. Okay, so moving on to number eight, and we would say make sure to visit the Nocturne Alley in Diagon Alley. Now, Nocturne Alley is a themed area within the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando, and it is located inside of Diagon Alley, and it's kind of hidden, which is why it made the list, right? But of course, this is the seedy alley from the Harry Potter series, where characters such as Draco Malfoy and the Death Eaters can often be found. And the other cool thing is that Nocturne Alley is home to several shops, including Bergen and Burks, a shop that sells dark art arts artifacts. Okay, so moving over to number seven, we've been talking a lot about some merchandise and shops, but don't forget about the food, but specifically don't forget about the butterbeer over at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Now, butterbeer is a must try when visiting Universal. It's a creamy, sweet drink that tastes like a cross between shortbread and butterscotch. You can find it at various locations throughout Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. And the coolest thing is it is available in a few different forms. You can get it as a cold beverage served in a souvenir mug or a frozen slushy. And don't forget, you can get it hot for those colder days. And additionally, you can find butterbeer flavored ice cream, fudge, and so many other treats. And it is important for me to note that butterbeer is non-alcoholic, so it is suitable for all kids. And of course, like we said, it's a delicious and refreshing treat that's perfect for those hot days in the parks. Okay, so now that we spoke about the kids' favorite drinks at the Universal um, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, for number six, don't forget that Universal does have some really, really cool alcoholic drinks for the adults visiting Universal and for those parents who are looking to get the most out of their Harry Potter experience as well. The other cool thing, and the reason why we're bringing this up, is it's specifically you know, kind of geared and um, it's themed around the books and the movies, right? So some of our favorite alcoholic drinks in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter are the Hogshead Beer, the Wizard's Brew, Dragon Scale Beer, the Deathly Hallows Drink, which is kind of Harry Potter fire whiskey, the Pure Dazzle, and the hogs tea. And again, like we said, these drinks are specifically, you know, and for the beer, they are specifically brewed for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So we just thought it had to make the list because this is really something that you can't experience 
anywhere else in the world. Okay, so we're about almost a little bit more than halfway through, and I just wanted to say thank you all again so, so much for checking out this video. And if you are finding this video helpful, and if you are planning a Universal Orlando trip, just be sure to subscribe to our channel, as we have a lot more similar content coming out in the coming weeks to help you be as prepared as possible for your next Universal Orlando vacation. But moving on to number five, and we would say make sure that you upgrade to the Park to Park ticket to ride the Hogwarts Express. Now, the Hogwarts Express is a train attraction, within the Wizarding World, and it is a full-scale replica of the Hogwarts Express from the Harry Potter series. And of course, it's one of the coolest and main ways to travel from Hogsmeade over to Diagon Alley, which are located in two separate parks. Hogsmeade is in Islands of Adventure, and Diagon Alley is in Universal Studios Florida. Riders can board the Hogwarts Express at either the Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley station, and take the scenic journey through the British countryside, just like Harry, Ron, and Hermione did in the books and the films. And we would say the cool thing about this is it's really about the full experience. Walking through the queues, you do feel like you're getting ready to board a train. You're getting on the train, just everything about it. And the other cool thing, too, is it is two different experiences back and forth. So if you ride it from Hogsmeade over to Diagon Alley, it's one journey. And Diagon Alley back over to Hogsmeade, it's a completely different ride. And we just think that's really, really cool. The other thing that I will say is if you're on the fence and if you have, let's say, a multi-day ticket, and you're like, I don't know if I want to pay for the park to park just to go and ride the Hogwarts Express, you can always upgrade your ticket later on. So I always say, if you're on the fence, start with the base ticket because you can upgrade your ticket um, once you get down there. And the way it works is Universal has pretty much has like a, depending on the day or type of ticket, it's really just like one time flat fee. So it's not like if you're only going to use the park to park for one day, um, it's still the same cost, right? So that's another important thing to kind of factor in when looking at at all of the ticket options. All right, so moving on to number four, and this might seem a little early, especially if you've been watching our videos, you know we usually have this a little bit higher on the list, but we would say make sure to take advantage of early park admission. And you already know here at the Park Prodigy, we love early park admission just because we think that if you use it the right way, you'll just get so much more done within your time in the parks. Now, the reason why we recommend it specifically over at Universal is because it is for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and it is really for the most popular rides in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So over at Hogsmeade, you have Flight of the Hippogriff, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, and then Ollivander's Wand Shop. Over at Diagon Alley, you do have Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, and then you have Ollivander's Wand Shop. Which brings me to a tip and trick number three, which would be always start out at Islands of Adventure, especially if you're only visiting for one day. Now, the original and first land of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is, is Hogsmeade, which is located in Islands of Adventure. And for the fastest entrance to the Wizarding World, go straight to the right as soon as you enter the park and take a left once you hit Seuss Landing. For fans of the books and the movies, you'll recognize Hogsmeade as the charming town covered in snow and home to the famous Butterbeer. You'll also find some of the best attractions, stores, and restaurants in all of Universal Orlando. But specifically for the attractions, there's three attractions open for um, early park admission. There's really the Velocicoaster as well, which is not included in Harry Potter, which is also open for early park admission, which is why we're kind of, you know, we always recommend to start there. And it, it really is just because there's so many more rides to take advantage of. With that being said, on the flip side, if you're really looking for like the more of the laid back or to take advantage of, of all vanders, like we said, with low wait times, then of course, go over to Universal Studios Florida. But we just think that you want to get to islands first, you want to get those rides out of the way as early as possible. Which brings me to tip and trick number two. You know, there's a lot of um, information online. We would say always start with Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. And a lot of um, what I read online, specifically from the Universal locals, is they say, no, nah, that doesn't work. Um, you know, you're still going to wait long, even if you start with Hagrid's. What I would say to that is, I mean, what we recommend and really what we help our clients do is show up as early as possible. And I really mean if you're taking advantage of early park admission the right way, if early park admission starts at 8 a.m. and City Walk opens up at 7 a.m., you want to be at City Walk at 7 a.m. And what you want to do is you want to be some of the first guests waiting online to get into the park. Because if you show up when we recommend you show up to use early park admission, the parks are not going to be open yet, which is fine because you will go and you will wait right there, right in front of the gate, waiting for the gates to open up. What that will allow you to do is you will really, really be some of the first guests into the park 
And then the reason why we recommend Hagrid's Magical Creatures first is because you are getting going and getting the, on that ride out of the way, and it will still be a really, really low wait time. If you show up, let's say at 7.45, or if early admission starts at 8, and you show up at 8, then you're going to be you know, in the back of the line, which might be some of the reason why some folks don't see the benefit to going on Hagrid's first. I've also read you can hit Hagrid's really at the end of the night, right, for the, the another really, really low wait time. Yes, of course, you could do that. In my opinion, though, if you only have one day or if, like, this ride is the most important thing for you, I don't know if you want to risk it. You know, the, the way that rides work and sometimes the rides can go down, you never know, like, how the day will pan out. So there's a certain risk there. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I'd rather just get there extremely early and just be some of the first guests in the park because I feel like that's more of a of a guaranteed thing of course the ride i've been there and the ride has gone down you know, to start the day right and then everyone goes to velocicoaster but again you're then you're getting velocicoaster out of the way for early park admission and you're still some of the first guests in the park so i you know i don't know we <laughs> i could go about this all day and we do try to look at it from every which angle and we just still think that i just still think this is the first ride you want to go on get it out of the way just because later in the day, you don't know what the wait time is going to be like. Okay, so moving on to number one, and probably, you know, one of the most important ones that ties into really everything, know when to visit. Now, as a general rule, we typically say to avoid major school breaks whenever possible. As a general rule of thumb, we typically always say to avoid the major school breaks, right? But we understand that that's not always a possibility, and there are some benefits. So, right, as a general rule of thumb, if you're looking to really get on as many rides as possible with the lowest wait times as possible, we have found that typically you'll want to visit in January, February, the end of August, or all of September. In January, it's really like the 11th to the 19th, 25th to the 31st. February, it's the 2nd to the 12th. August, it's really pretty much any time after that second week of August, and then of course, all of September. On the flip side though, when we have mentioned this, one of the cool things about visiting during, let's say, some of the busier times of year, is that Universal will have both parks open for early park admission. And it's important to note that because Universal always has one of the parks open for early admission, but because of the um, increased uh, crowds, they sometimes will have both open, which gives you a ton of flexibility to come and visit the theme parks. And if you are looking for a tool that shows you exactly when Universal is expecting the most crowds, you can go to our website and check out our Universal Orlando crowd calendar and we'll break down and you'll be able to you know, kind of pick the best time for you and your family to come and visit the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. But that is the list everyone from 13 all the way down to one. Those are the best tips and tricks for visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I really, really hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you have a little bit more you know, insight as to some of the different moving parts. I hope you go into Google all those little um, you know, hidden Easter eggs, how to get onto platform nine and three quarters, how to find creature if you want to go and ride the Hogwarts Express. There's a lot that goes into this, but of course, that's why we're continuing to create all these videos to help you out as much as possible. I just wanted to say thank you all again so, so much for checking this one out. I think that's all the time we have for today. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.